Hey, what's up marketers? How's it going? I'm Arpit, your AI and growth marketing trainer. Today, we'll talk about how proxies drive social media scraping. For scraping the web at any reasonable scale, proxies are an absolute must. If you want to reach or scrape tens and thousands of people on any social network, you need multiple bots using proxies. Proxies can be used not only for anonymity, but also for scraping and automating tasks on social networks. Using proxies, you can automate social tasks such as sending messages, sending requests, liking and commenting, curating content, etc. You can bypass geo-blocking and scrape the results shown to a mobile device user among many other benefits. I'll show you this amazing tool called Pride Data for all your proxy needs. We'll go through a step-by-step -step tutorial to set up proxies for web scraping using Bright Data. I'll show you how to get proxy IPs from Bright Data and then use them with no-code scraping and automation tools such as Phantom Buster and Octoparse. We'll look at how to tackle some of the most common proxy-related challenges you may come across while scraping popular social media sites. Before I jump into this tutorial, you must understand basics about proxies. So let me address these fundamental questions. What are proxies? Why proxies are used for social media scraping? How proxies help in web scraping? How many proxies do you need? Types of proxies. So what are proxies? Well, a proxy is an extra server between you and the site that you're trying to scrape. While making the request, a proxy server will use its own IP address. The site that you're scraping no longer sees your IP address, giving you the ability to scrape the web anonymously if you choose. If you want to scrape substantial amount of data, you will most certainly need multiple proxies to perform this operation smoothly. A good proxy service provider doesn't just give you IP addresses, but also a proxy manager to create a bunch of rules to efficiently manage your scraping without any code. Why proxy is used for social media scraping? There are three main reasons why proxies are used for web scraping. First, hiding your source machine's IP address. Second, counter geo-blocking. Third, getting past rate limits on the target site. The main benefit is to hide your original web scraping machine's IP address, so your identity is absolutely secure. Another benefit is to get around geo IP based content restrictions. Like if you want to scrape the US Apple App Store from India, then you can access it through a US based proxy server to get past the restriction. Another big benefit of using proxies for web scraping is to get past the rate limit. If you're looking to scrape thousands of web pages on a single site, then you're much more likely to run into rate limits at some point. If too many requests come in from a single IP address, then most sites will return some sort of error message blocking future requests from that client. In order to tackle this sort of restriction, you need to spread a large number of requests over a large number of proxy servers evenly so that the target site can only see a handful of requests coming in from a single proxy server IP address, keeping you under the limit. How proxies help in web scraping? Most large sites counter scraping. They try to block scrapers through different ways. You must manage your proxies intelligently to outsmart the target website. Your proxy service provider must be equipped to handle challenges like proxy rotation, bans, throttling, session management, reduced bandwidth, SSL description, blacklisting, etc. A good proxy management tool like Bright Data can help you overcome these challenges. Identify bans. Your proxy solution needs to be able to detect numerous types of bans so that you can troubleshoot and fix the underlying problem. For example, captchas, redirects, blocks, ghosting, etc. Retry errors. If your proxies experience any errors, bans, timeouts, etc., they need to be able to retry the request with different proxies. User agents. Managing user agents is crucial to having a healthy crawl. A user agent UA string is a text that client computer software sends through a request. The user agent string helps the destination server identify which browser, the type of device and the operating system is being used. Control proxies. Some scraping projects require you to keep a session with the same proxy so you'll need to configure the proxy pool to allow for this. Add delays. Randomize delays and apply good throttling to help cloak the fact that you are scraping. Geographical targeting. Sometimes you need to be able to configure your pool so that only proxies from a specific location will be used on certain websites. Routing. 
route requests through residential data center and mobile ip networks based on custom rules to get the most cost effective blend reduce bandwidth use proxy manager features such as regex and custom rules to reduce traffic how many proxies do you need the size of your proxy pool will depend on a number of factors first the number of requests you'll be making per hour generally 500 requests per proxy per hour doesn't raise any suspicion second the target website large websites with more sophisticated anti bot counter measures will require a large proxy pool third the type of ips you are using as proxies data center residential or mobile ips more on that in the next point fourth the sophistication of your proxy management system like proxy rotation throttling session management etc all of these factors have a big impact on the effectiveness of your proxy pool types of proxies there are many different types of proxies that will cover just about any configuration that you can think of here i'll give you a quick overview of the three most popular proxy types first residential proxy as the name implies these types of proxies are designed to look like real visitors requesting internet services from their residents with their computers the residential proxy ip addresses are associated with an isp and in most cases are the best type of proxies to use because they look like regular people trying to access the internet second data center proxies these are non physical ip addresses that are artificially created at data centers a single server can host hundreds of data center proxies making them vulnerable for a ban the upside is their speed as most common centers have an enviable internet connection they are also cost effective third mobile ips mobile ips are the ips of private mobile devices they are among the most expensive and overkill unless you want to only scrape the results shown to a mobile user now that you understand the basics about proxies let me give you a quick tutorial of how to set them up for scraping social networks using bright data bright data for all your proxy needs sign up using my affiliate link in the description this way you can support the channel so i can continue making such videos once you're logged in go to the proxy tab and click on add zone you will see different proxies like data center residential mobile insert the name of the social media network you want to scrape or automate like i'll put linkedin.com mostly you will be directed to web unlocker which is their flagship proxy but it depends on the target site like if i put pinterest.com then you will see it's recommending data center proxies the web unlocker uses the most common proxy for the target website in order to unlock it as quickly as it can in most cases it is residential proxy some of the key benefits of using web unlocker are capture solving handling markup changes auto retry etc then give your zone a name generally i like to name it as the website i'll be scraping using this zone so let's name the zone as linkedin then you'll see the price plan dollar 17.5 per gb once your 7 day free trial is over this is what you will be charged then we'll see we have exclusive gips which will be selected automatically exclusive gips means a group of ips that are exclusive to you for your target domain all the ips within the gips are not being used by anyone else for your target site then give your zone the permission to select a country state city asn and also check linkedin then click on add zone now we need to set up the proxy manager through which we can create a bunch of rules to manage our proxies proxy manager has some very useful built in features like live preview of the whole traffic logs and statistics rules for splitting the traffic for bandwidth and cost optimization rules that can automatically retry failed request easy way of adjusting headers and ssl fingerprints ip rotation and sessions management visit the proxy manager page on the bright data website to download the proxy manager i have also mentioned the link in the description for windows just download the window installer and follow the installation wizard for mac just open the terminal run luminati command and wait until it boots
It may take about 10 minutes till you see a box in the terminal saying open this link in your browser. Let the terminal be open to stay connected with the proxy manager. Once you open the link, you will see the proxy manager dashboard. Click on add new port. A proxy port is a number that refers to specific virtual location on a computer. Then select the zone for this port that we created earlier. Then click on next. And now you can close the port window. Now you will see the proxy port you just created. Click on it. Let's start by targeting. From here you can choose the country, state and city for your proxy. You can also choose ISP, ASN, carrier or operating system. Let's put the country as United States and the state as California and the city as San Francisco. Now let's look at the next tab which is the IP control. Now the first setting I'd like to change here is the DNS lookup. By default it is set to resolve by the super proxy. The advantage of this option is faster response but we will change it to resolve by peer so we have greater anonymity as this is more important for a social media scraper or a bot. My peer will be a real PC user in San Francisco. We will also turn on session termination. This means you are asking the proxy manager to terminate the session so it will stop sending requests when the IP is not available. This setting is very useful for social account management where changing the IP during the session may raise suspicion for social accounts. Next we can see the pool size and rotate IPs is disabled. That's because the preset configuration is set to long single session IP. This setting is best for social media scraping or automation because again changing the IP during the session may raise suspicion for social accounts. In case you wanted to rotate IPs then you can change the configuration to rotating IPs. Now you can see the rotating IPs is turned on and you can set the pool size as per your needs like I can enter 100 or even 1000 here. You can rotate IPs when you are scraping a social network without login or scraping an e-commerce website. For now I will switch back to long single session IP. Now let's check out the rules tab and learn some useful rules you can create for social media scraping. Click on add new custom rule, then select what will be your rule trigger, a URL which triggers on a specific URL. This trigger can be used when you want to switch from a data center to a residential or a mobile IP on a specific page URL. Status code of the request response, like you can choose from 200, 403, 404, 500 etc. Response body trigger is pulled when the HTML response body contains the specified string. Using regex it will scan the body for the string you specify. This trigger can be used to solve captcha issues. Then we have request time more than and request time less than. In both these triggers you can specify milliseconds for example to ban slow IPs or save fast IPs for future use. Now once we have chosen a trigger we need to choose an action. The actions can be performed are Retry with a new port that will route the same request with a new port. For example, your port is data center IP and once the rule is triggered, then route the request to a residential port. Ban IP for a period of time, which also can be referred to a cooling period. If you type 0, it will ban the IP permanently. Ban IP per domain for a period of time. This will enable you to work with the same IP with other domains. Now let's look at a few rules example. Let's set up a rule to retry with a new IP if the status code is 403. 403 error code which means access is denied can sometimes be overcome by trying with a new IP. To set up this rule, trigger will be status code. Select 403 from the drop list and select retry with new IP. This will route the same request with a new IP address. It is also possible to retry using a mobile IP for that purpose. Your action would be retry with a new proxy port. This new proxy port will be a mobile proxy zone that you must create beforehand from your bright data dashboard and then just put the proxy port number here. Another useful option for reducing bandwidth is the regex. By selecting the listed file formats, it will remove the selected file formats from the request and the response will be lighter. Another great rule to save cost is to start your request with data center IP and then getting a specific page URL you would like to switch to a residential or a mobile IP 
This can be achieved by selecting URL as a trigger. Type the required URL and retry with a new port and select the predefined port. Now that you have a good idea about how to manage proxies for social media scraping, let me quickly show you how to integrate them with your favorite no-code social media automation and scraping tools. Bright data integration with Phantom Buster and Octoparse. Phantom Buster is one of the best tools for social media automation and they have an exclusive tie-up with Bright Data for proxies. It is really easy to integrate Bright Data with Phantom Buster. You can store your proxy information on your Phantom Buster account so you can use it with multiple phantoms. You can create a proxy pool, click on your name in the top right of your account and choose proxies. Click on plus new proxy pool and name it anything you like. Now you need to fill the proxy information, address, username and password. You can find this information in the bright data zone you're intending on using. Just click on edit zone and you'll see the access parameters. Address will be zproxy.lum hyphen superproxy.io colon two 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 five. All right, so this is on the screen. You can check this out. Now let's quickly have a look at how to integrate bright data with Octoparse for no code social media scraping. You can simply paste the proxies in your Octoparse task settings. Open the task that requires the use of IPs in Octoparse. Click settings on the top left corner to set up IP proxy. Scroll down, go to anti-blocking settings. Choose use IP proxies, then click on settings. In the IP proxy field, copy and paste the Bright Data downloaded IPs list. To download the IP list from Bright Data, simply edit the zone and then you'll see the option of downloading the IPs list. That'll be all for this tutorial. I hope now you have a strong idea about how proxies drive social media scraping. If you learned something new today, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on my future videos. Share this video with anybody you think it'll be useful for. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.